Hello, and welcome to this free video, Four Ways to Make Peace with Loss. I'm psychologist and author Dr. Paul Coleman, and I'm also the founder of FindingPeaceInYourHeart.com. Thank you so much for watching. On your journey after a great loss, many people believe they can't find peace, at least not right away. They believe that it's going to take them a lot of time to sort through their feelings before they can really move forward and find some kind of peace. But have you ever felt happy and sad at the same time? Maybe you attended a wedding of someone you love dearly and you're so happy for the couple. But maybe you're also sad because they're going to be moving across the country and you won't see them nearly as often as you had been. Well, in the same way, it's possible for peace to coexist with grief and sadness, even in the early stages of grief. And I'd like to give you some thoughts on how you can cultivate peace after loss. Let me tell you a story first. Oh, about a little more than two decades ago, my dad needed heart surgery. It was the month of December. And he called me up and I could tell he was a little scared and I could tell maybe he was even thinking he wasn't sure if he would make it through this surgery. And he had to make a choice between which hospital to go to. He had two choices. And he asked for my opinion and we discussed it and I gave him my advice and he took it. And his heart surgery was successful, but he was so weak after the surgery that one of those many viruses and germs that are always floating about a hospital entered his lungs. He developed pneumonia and he slipped into a coma. At Christmas, the day of Christmas actually, I went to visit him in his room and I noticed that the room was kind of dark and I was thinking of all the past Christmases that I'd shared with my dad and there were Christmas trees in the past. Christmas tree lights and colors and the only colors here were the, the blinking lights of all the monitors. And I remember in Christmas, Christmas's past there was joyful noise, singing, Christmas songs. Except the noise this day was just the clanking of carts in the hallway and the chattering of the nurses. So in that wintry day, in that windowless room, I leaned in very close to my dad, hoping he could hear me, as many people in a coma can still hear. And I told him what a wonderful father he is and how grateful I am having him in my life. Now, I didn't realize it at the time, but I was actually doing one of the things that helped people to find peace in their heart after loss. I was open to gratitude. When you're open to gratitude, you're not just focusing on what is lost. You focus also on what lasts. What lasts is the love of that relationship and the gratefulness you have for everything that's happened in your life because of the person who has passed away. A few days after I saw my dad on Christmas, the doctors told us we need to make a decision about removing life support. It was a very difficult decision and we toiled over that, my siblings and my mother and I. But we finally decided it was the right thing to do. And the day we turned off life support, we stood around my dad's bed and as we said a prayer, he breathed his last breath and he left his body to go to the other side. On the day of his funeral, there was a, a blizzard. And that night, my brother and I went out to shovel the driveway and there was this pile of snow plowed in front of our driveway. It took a long time to shovel, but we did so. And then we noticed across the street, there was an elderly neighbor. So we walked there and we shoveled her driveway. And I remember thinking with each shovel, did we do the right thing with stopping life support? And had I told my dad to go to a different hospital, might he still be alive? But then I put aside those questions. Maybe you've had those questions yourself. I call them the why questions. Why does someone have to get cancer and die? Why does someone have to die so young? Why did someone die with such pain? Why did someone die when they had so much to live for? And the how questions. How am I going to move forward in life without this person? We need to put those questions aside because they're not answerable, at least not right away. So another thing to help you find peace is to stop asking those questions and instead open to mystery. When you open to mystery, 
you actually allow other insights from other people who are wise or insights from above to enter into your mind and give you some advice that you might not have gotten if you were so caught up in the why questions. It reminds me of whenever you call someone on the cell phone, have you ever gotten the message, I'm sorry, their mailbox is full. You can't leave a message right now. Well, if you're stuck asking all those why and how questions, your mailbox is full and you won't be able to get the kinds of insights that you need. So by opening to mystery and opening to gratitude, you actually can start moving forward on this journey that you may not have asked for. And as you start walking, the next thing that you want to do is be open to compassion. Because very often in the early stages, sometimes by necessity, we close ourselves off, we shut down. But ultimately we have to open our hearts. Because in doing so, we discover that there may be other purposes to our life, other meanings to our life that we haven't yet discovered. And the only way that we're going to do that is to be open to compassion. In fact, when my brother and I shoveled the driveway of the elderly neighbor, that was a compassionate act. Now, it was a very small act. It wasn't very significant in the scheme of things. But what we were doing was demonstrating that our hearts were open, that we were not going to close ourselves off to other people in our grief. A final way to be finding some peace in your heart when your heart is in pieces is to be open to signs. And by that I mean intuitions and interesting coincidences, we call them synchronicities that happen, that make you realize that there are people working behind the scenes in your life trying to help you to move forward. I remember six months after my dad passed away, I woke up in the middle of the night because somebody had grabbed hold of my foot and was wiggling it. First I thought it was my wife kicking me in bed, but she was fast asleep. And as I sat up in bed, I also smelled the distinct aroma of pipe tobacco. Now, my dad always smoked a pipe when I was growing up. And I wanted to be absolutely sure that I was wide awake and I wasn't dreaming this, so I got out of bed and I walked around the bedroom. And sure enough, it was a very clear, distinct aroma of pipe tobacco. And I left the bedroom and I didn't smell it outside the bedroom. And when I came back into the bedroom, the aroma had vanished. But I knew my dad was there. The next morning, upon awakening, I told my wife what happened. And she said, well, what was happening with the, the foot being shaken? I said, well, actually, when I was a boy, and it was time to go to school, get up and go to school, my dad would come into my bedroom and he'd wiggle my foot. He'd say, get up, time to get up. And my wife says, do you know what today is? I said, yes, it's Sunday. And she smiled. She said, yes, but it's also Father's Day. So if you are open to gratitude and open to mystery, open to compassion, and open to signs, you can cultivate and experience inner peace while you are grieving and while you are moving forward in this part of your life that maybe you didn't ask for, but it is awaiting you on this journey we call life. Let me end with a quote from a 13th century poet named Rumi. And he was talking about this very thing, about the journey through life, when we're not always sure where we're going. But he said, start walking. Your legs will grow heavy and tired. Then comes the moment of feeling the wings you've grown lifting. I'm Dr. Paul Coleman. You can find me on FindingPeaceInYourHeart.com. Thank you so much for watching, and God bless.